Okay, this recording will cover eye disorders, um, so the patho of those, and um, medications for the eyes. So first remember that I told you you needed to look these up and know what all of these terms are. Okay, most of them are just terms. You're also gonna, you are gonna look, learn a lot of these terms um, when you're in fundamentals, when you're in the lab looking for these. So you'll, you'll need to know these for both classes, okay? Um, we are going to specifically talk about glaucoma and cataracts during this narration. So cloud, um, cataracts are cloudy areas in the lens of the eye, and um, eventually they will ch cause changes in vision. Usually cataracts are what happen to old people, okay? Um, and you can actually see it when you look at their eyes. You can see that it is cloudy. Um, I think I, I told at least one group this, but my, um, my dog had cataracts. Um, she was, and I actually think maybe my, my dog right now might have them starting. I just recognize the cloudiness in the eyes. So, um, and it does, they do cause cloudy vision, um, fuzzy vision. It's like looking through, um, uh, somebody compared it once to looking through a piece of saran wrap that has been folded up on itself tons and tons of times. Um, so that it's just, everything is distorted. Um, they're also very sensitive to glares, okay? Um, so like I said, most people get cataracts when they're older. But you will have some people who have um, cataracts um, as babies. Babies can have cataracts, and that is, you know, that's congenital. They're born with some kind of defect that causes cataracts, and we can do surgery on them. Um, a lot of times they're wearing, you know, like those Coke bottle glasses. Um, cataracts can be secondary. Diabetes, radiation, excessive um, UV light exposure can all induce cataracts. And then finally, if you have um, trauma to the eye, to the lens, then that can actually form a cataract as well. Um, this picture here is just a cataract, is the cataract surgery. And I showed you guys during, um, I showed you guys this during class. Um, they make an incision into the eyeball. They pull out the diseased lens and put in a new implant. So um, after that, their pupils will not, um, they, if they, well, if they have cataract surgery on just one eye, you'll notice a difference. Like that eye won't constrict when you shine a light in it, for example. Um, that pupil won't constrict and it might be a little bit misshapen. So you will see differences um, in, cater in people who've had cataract surgery. All right, next up, we're going to talk about glaucoma. Um, glaucoma is an increase in IOP, which is interocular pressure. And when you have an increase in interocular pressure, it damages the, op the optic nerve. Okay, so this is this picture here shows this pressure buildup here, um, which causes damage to the optic nerve, and eventually that can cause blindness, which is why we treat glaucoma. Um, so there's two kinds: there's open angle and closed angle. Um, in open angle, the trabecular network is blocked, and they'll get the they'll lose their peripheral vision, um, and they'll get like eventually they'll get um, tunnel vision because the optic nerve is damaged. So in so many, you know, so damaged that all they can see is just straight ahead. Um, now, typically the aqueous humor flows out of this trabecular network, the trabecular mesh work here. And if it's blocked, then you get this open angle glaucoma. You do have a different way for it to, um, to for it to drain, which is why this is, this is a slow process. Now, closed angle glaucoma is much less common, which is good because it's way more severe. And in this case, the trabecular meshwork is blocked, but so is this uveoscleral drain. Um, and so nothing can drain at all. The eye starts um, to build up pressure. They're, your patient will get a severe headache, eye pain. They'll start puking. Um, their vision is clearly going to be blurred. Um, they'll have like a halo glowing around uh, lights. Their eye will look red and swollen. Um, and this is, I mean, this is an emergency. So they do have to go in and first they have to well, typically what they're going to do is they're going to do medication to, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, to drain it, to open it up to drain. And then they'll, um, but that usually is going to cause eye surgery. So they're actually paralyze the eye and drain it. Um, this one here, this slide, remember again, this is the slide where you need to look these up and you need to know what these terms mean. You need to know what presbyopia is, diplopia, myopia, hyperopia. Well, those I defined for you. You need to know what an astigmatism is. Um, so all of this needs to 
Oh, this astigmatism, this bullet right here is supposed to go under astigmatism, just FYI. So um, remember we talked about color blindness. Um, color blindness is the one change that doesn't really, we can't really fix it with glasses um, or contacts. And generally men are colorblind more often than women because it is an X-linked recessive um, trait. And then X-linked recessives, because men only have one X chromosome, when you have, when you're female and you have two X chromosomes, then hopefully, then you usually don't get two copies of the recessive gene. And that's why it's more, that's why, that's why it's rarer if you're female to be colorblind. All right, external eye disorders. These are all infections. Um, blepharitis, styes, um, chalazians, uh, keratitis, conjunctivitis. Um, styes are very common. Um, a lot of people get them. Um, to treat them, you put a, as hot of a compress as you can on it. And it'll cause the, um, it actually, it um, uh, allows the tissue to, to get the infection out. It seeps out. So all of your, all of the um, inflammatory factors and things like that, this will seep out of the eye as long as you put a hot compress on it. So um, that's how we treat those. Um, conjunctivitis, um, otherwise known as pink eye, if it's bacterial. So bacterial conjunctivitis is the is the one that's super super contagious where i swear if you look at somebody with pink eye you get pink eye you don't however get pink eye if somebody farts on your pillow even though that is the going story in my house um it is very easy to transfer it to your other eye so people say you have to be really really careful with that um it can be a virus that causes pink eye or i'm sorry that causes conjunctivitis it's not called pink eye then um, if it's a virus, a lot of people say, oh, I've got a cold in my eye and their eye gets kind of crusty, it goes away on its own. Um, a lot of times it's if you are congested from something else, from a cold. Allergic conjunctivitis, this is seriously just what it sounds like. You, your eyes are all red and watery because you've been exposed to something that you're allergic to. So I'm allergic to cats. Um, I still, ha I had a cat when I was in college. I adopted it. I knew I was allergic to cats. Fine. I'm fine as long as I like wash my hands after I you know, hold them or whatever, wash my arms. Um, but the, the cat, after I adopted her from the pound, she slept on my pillow that night and I woke up and my eyes wouldn't open because they were so, um, swollen and red and stuff. So, um, a trachoma, you can just put a little X over that. That's beyond the scope of this class, but that's actually having chlamydia in your eye. Um, and we will, we'll talk about that with, when we talk about STIs. We know that the vision changes as we age. All of these things change, um, which makes it so that a lot of um, a lot of times you are going to you have lens changes, you have muscle changes in the eyes, and so the eyelids tend to get a little bit droopy. Um, your eyes don't focus as quickly; they don't switch from near to far vision quite as quickly, and vice versa. A lot of older people end up needing glasses. Um, because you become farsighted as you get older. I finally figured that out. I had to think about it for a minute. Um, but you become farsighted as you get older, and so um, a lot of people do need glasses. All right, when we're talking about drugs that affect the eye, um, these are, um, so there's a lot of them. We're going to focus on things that we use for glaucoma because that's the big, I mean, that's the big one, you know. Sure, we'll talk about antibiotics that we can put in the eyes, um, but these first several slides here are for, are for glaucoma. Um, and note that when I talk about, um, dilating the pupil and constricting the pupil, both of those are used for glaucoma. It makes, it really makes no sense except that it's just the way, um, it's just the, it, it opens up one uh, one of the drains, basically, okay? If you dilate the pupil, it opens up one drain. If you constrict the pupil, it opens up the other drain, okay? All right, so midriatics and meiotics. Um, so take a look at these. Um, pilocarpine is the most common meiotic that you'll see. Uh, midriatics, um, apraclonidine we'll use. The D is for dilate. So between midriatic and meiotic, you know that D is um, that the midriatics dilate, meiotics constrict. Um, also a very general type is going to be your cycloplegics. Remember plegia is the term for paralysis and cycloplegics, atropine, um, is a lot of times what we use that actually paralyzes the ciliary um, body. They will kind of dilate the, um, eye a little bit. Um, but basically this is going to make it so this paralyzes your pupil. So your pupil is not going to move. Okay. 
Um, it's, it, um, once it's, once it's dilated a little bit. And this is so that you can have eye surgery. All right. Our first type of glaucoma meds, um, the cholinergics, <clears throat> cholinergics are meiotics, meaning they constrict the pupil. Um, this leads to reduced IOP because the aqueous humor can now drain better once the pupil is constricted. Okay. Pilocarpine is your most common one. That's kind of cool because rather than having to put it in your eyeballs several times a day, it comes as a weekly insert that continuously delivers medication and um, it, um, that way you only have to put it in once a week, okay? We also use these for eye surgery um, <coughs> and it helps with people, <coughs> excuse me, who have crossed eyes as well, though I don't exactly know the mechanism of action of that. Um, typically when we use eye drops, they don't go systemic. Um, however, when we learn about cholinergic and adrenergic medications later on in the semester, um, we are going to see side effects of cholinergic drugs. Any medication, if you take too much of it, any topical medication, if you take too much of it, can go systemic. Um, and so in this case, we're going to see that if they use too, med too much of this medication, they will have cholinergic side effects, um, which are beyond the scope of this particular lecture. We will learn those later in class. Okay, so on this one, just understand that our cholinergics cause meiosis, which um, decreases interocular pressure and no, and no pilocarpine. All right, we can also use some pathomimetics. Some pathomimetics um, are, they mimic epinephrine and norepinephrine. So they stimulate your sympathetic nervous system. Um, your, in, in the eyeball, what that does is it dilates your pupil, okay? Um, so, because you have to see to be able to run from the bear, okay? So that's the only thing it should hap that should happen. It shouldn't go further into your system. Again, if you use 18,000 drops a day, it probably will, okay? Um, but in this case, it's gonna dilate your pupil, um, and that will actually cause decreased interocular pressure because it opens up another drain, okay? Alpha agonists are our sympathomimetic. Um, the example here is alpha-gan, okay? Alpha agonist, alpha-gan, that's why it's called that. Um, we also use iopidine um, during surgery, okay? Um, so alpha-gan, if you use too much, you may see some tachycardia, but most people don't put the entire bottle of eye drops in their eyes, so they're probably fine, okay? What does this do again? Dilates the, eye, um, dilates the pupil, which allows it to drain better um, and uh, you know Im improves the outflow of the aqueous humor and now we have a decreased interocular pressure. All right, beta blockers. So these are actually the uh, opposite of, some, of a sympathomimetic because this one blocks it. Um, so these actually reduce interocular pressure in two ways. First, they help it drain better, okay? But also, they make you not make as much, so it reduces the formation of the aqueous humor. Um, they don't dilate or constrict, even though you would think a beta blocker would constrict because it's blocking the um, sympathetic nervous system, um, but that's not actually how it works, okay? Now, remember in class I said your beta blockers all end in O-L-O-L. -O -L. That is true no matter how the beta blocker is administered, whether it's IVPO or a drop, okay? Um, now, might this get systemic? It might, okay? And so this is where I noted that um, we will not give these to people who are already on beta blockers. When do we give beta blockers? We're actually gonna learn about it, that in the next couple of weeks here when we talk about cardiac drugs. But we give them for hypertension, we give them for heart attacks, um, we give them for headaches, for migraines. So lots of people are on beta blockers. Um, one of the things that beta blockers do though is that they bronchoconstrict um, because they're blocking the sympathetic nervous system. And when you need to run from the bear, you need your bronchi nice and big and dilated. Well, if we, bron if we block that, now our bronchi are shrinking and they're constricting down. So we don't give these to people with asthma when we're talking about beta blockers. Um, will it, an eye drop affect that? Probably not. If they use a ton of it, then it might. So one of the things you're going to tell your patients is if for some reason you um, start to feel dizzy or if you, if you start to wheeze, if you feel like you're having trouble breathing, 
those beta blockers might be getting systemic, okay? The trouble breathing is from the bronchoconstriction. The dizziness is because beta blockers lower your blood pressure. Because again, sympatho, if it's blocking the sympathetic nervous system, remember your sympathetic nervous system raises your blood pressure, so blocker would lower it. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, yet another type. Um, on this one, you are going to, um, all, what you need to know here, osmotic diuresis. Anytime you diurese, it means you're losing fluid, okay? Um, now, how this works, it inhibits carbonic anhydrase, okay? Um, and that reduces the formation. It allows you to um, drain your aqueous humor because it causes this osmotic diuresis. As a result, the pressure goes down. All of these drugs end in zolamid, okay? Brinzolamid and dorzolamid, trusopt and azopt. Trusopt's more common. Um, but that is another, another class of medications for glaucoma. Um, you know, honestly, most people are going to be on one. However, you may have somebody who's on two different kinds. And it's really physician preference, okay? Um, when we're talking about those osmotic diuretics, this is actually how they work, okay? Um, you don't need to know this. What you do need to know is if somebody has closed, you don't need to know like all of this stuff here, okay? What you do need to know is that we can give these IV, and if somebody has um, closed angle glaucoma and is that, remember that's that emergency, we can give these one of we can give them one of these IV and that will help it. Okay, we put it in their eyeball and then we will often um, give it IV as well. Okay, because it pulls the um, it pulls the fluid out. Prostaglandin agonists. Um, these are, um, the newest class of drugs, but they're not, they're really not new. They've been around for at least 20 years. Okay. Um, but they're, they're still the newest ones and they work really well. And, and honestly, we've got a lot of treatments for glaucoma. So nobody's really doing a lot of research on it because what we have works. Um, the way they, these do is they actually increase the out, the outflow through the uveal scleral drain. Okay. Remember that's that second piece that I was talking about. These are nice because it's once a day dosing. They do one drop at night in each eye. Um, not so nice because they turn light eyes brown, okay? Um, not with the first dose. After a couple weeks, though, those patients with blue or green eyes are definitely going to have brown eyes. All of these have prost in them from prostaglandin. Um, Zalatan and Lumigan are um, both very, very commonly used. Um... Uh, Zalatan, I remember correctly, we always had to keep it in the fridge. Um, I don't, you don't need to know that, but, um, very common drug. And if you have brown eyes, this is usually what they're going to prescribe. So prostaglandin agonists. All right. Um, moving on to antimicrobial, uh, medications that we put in the eyes. Remember that if you get pink eye, you got to do eye drops because it's a bacterial infection. Um, we, so anything that ends in mycin here, tobramycin, erythromycin, those are antibiotics, okay? Um, we, the erythromycin, something to know about, to note about erythromycin is that we use that in newborns to prevent gonorrhea and chlamydia. Um, we give it to, um, every single baby who is born gets erythromycin ointment placed in their eyes so that they don't get that trachoma from chlamydia, okay? Um, meds that end in floxacin are another type of antibiotic. Um, there are, there's neosporin that comes as an eye drop, um, lots of things um, that come as an eye drop, okay? So really you're, you're going to see a lot of different possibilities here. Um, Note that if they do combine them with an anti-inflammatory eye drop, then the, um, the infection is not going to go away, okay, because it, it, um, it defeats the, the purpose of the eye drop because it suppresses, the, it suppresses the inflammatory response, okay? So don't combine them with the steroids. But know the ones that are on here, okay? Your mycins and your floxacins. And then finally, um, antiviral 
um, eye drops. Viroptic is the name, is the brand name. Remember, V I R, and that actually treats it if you've got herpes in your eye. All right, anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, you've got our NSAIDs that we can actually put in the eye, um, and then we've got steroids that can go in the eye. Um, a lot of times these are used after eye surgery to prevent um, inflammation. So a lot of times people who have LASIK done um, will have a very strict eye drop schedule, and they'll they will include some of these. Okay. Um, so NSAIDs work the same way everything else does. They reduce pain and redness. Um, and inflammation. Steroids, again, they suppress the inflammatory response. Note that all of these end in sewn or loan or, or um, solone, okay? Um, those are going to be your, your steroids, okay? Um, anesthetics, topical um, eye drops that are, that are numbing. We use these during surgery. We also use these during eye exams. So if you get your eyes dilated, they'll often do a numbing drop first and then put the um, midriatic in. Um, these are, you don't put these in your own eyes, okay? Um, they all end in cane, like I said. Um, if you're having eye surgery, they will numb it with this. But the only reason I know um, is that I went to the eye doctor this week and she used one of these when she dilated my eyes. So um, ophthalmic antihistamines. So when you're um, when you have allergic conjunctivitis, um, when your eyes are all red and itchy, um, usually they're going to end in ene. All antihistamines do. Um, got some examples here um, that end in e. Um, visine is one of them. Um, visine that says it gets the red out. Um, that's the one. That's an allergic one. Um, then we also have decongestants for the eye. Um, and another visine is for this. So decongestants for the eyes are basically um, used if you have a cold, okay? Um, they're not, and that is one of the, that is one of the um, other types of visine, okay? There's so many visine types and you have to look at it and it'll, they'll tell you what they're used for, okay? Um, over the counter, the simple, vi the regular allergy visine is an antihistamine. I believe the rest of them are decongestants. So, all right, let's do these questions. Patient receiving tetrahydrozoline asks how the drug works. Best response by the nurse will include the drug, drug works by pause. Answer the questions to yourself. Question singular to yourself. So this one is going to um, work. I remember your enes here are the ones that reduce their the anti allergies. This is one of the types of visine, okay? And it's going to vasoconstrict the blood vessels in and around the eye, and that's going to decrease redness because remember when you have red eyes, a lot of times it's because blood vessels. You can see the blood vessels. So that's that one, and then. Lubricants and moisturizers for the eyes. Artificial tears. Um, artificial tears literally are a very um, slight saline solution. Um, it comes in an ointment, comes in drops, and they're for dry eyes. Um, a lot of people have dry eyes as a result of like medications. Um, there's a syndrome called Sjogren's syndrome. I mentioned that when we were talking about auto um, uh, autoimmune diseases. S J O G R E N. Sjogren and um, my mom had this and she had very very dry eyes and so she used the artificial tears ointment um, and then there's um, Restasis which is actually um, it is an immuno it's actually an immunosuppressant cyclosporine is um, but this is used to <coughs> excuse me Restasis um, is a medication that treats dry eyes because of like these autoimmune diseases. So artificial tears is over the counter and they usually work for people. All right, nursing implications. You will learn these, um, I think, next semester. But let's talk about these a little bit because I'm going to test you on this now. Um, when you put eye drops in, you have your patient look up to the ceiling and you don't place it directly onto the top of the eye. You place it in the conjunctival sac. Um, Pressure to the inner canthus, that's the, the inner canthus is the corner of your eye by your nose, okay? Push there, it decreases the 
risk of systemic absorption of the drug, and that's especially important when you're giving um, like the beta blocker or the cholinergics, okay? Um, if more than one eye med is ordered, sometimes there will be, um, it, sometimes you have to do one first and then the next. However, in um, most cases, you have to do them at least five minutes apart. Um, and if they wear contacts, they will probably not wear them while they're getting the eye drops. Now, um, they're definitely not going to have them in when you put the eye drops in, okay? Unless it's like a lubricating one, that's fine. Um, but if they have contacts and maybe they have like pink eye, they shouldn't wear their contacts while they have pink eye because they're just going to continuously get pink eye. All right. When administering eye drops to a patient, the nurse places the drop where? Pause. Answer this to yourself. And hopefully you said into the lower conjunctival sac. Question two, which statement about the use of corticosteroids for ocular inflammation does the nurse identify as being true? Pause. Answer the question to yourself. All right, so steroids. Um, these are actually, this is actually A, they're used during the acute phase of the injury process or if you've had like surgery or something, to prevent fibrosis and scarring, which result in visual impairment. So remember, these are very potent anti-inflammatories. That second one there says produce a lesser immunosuppressant effect. No, that is more. Um, and the discoloration, that's, the, that's that glaucoma eye drop. So that is A. All right, which anti-glaucoma drug works by increasing the outflow of the aqueous humor between the uvea and sclera, remember that's the uveal sclera drain, as well as via the usual exit through the trabecular meshwork. Pause and answer that to yourself. And hopefully you said prostaglandins. So that would be um, the ones with the prost in them. All right, when administering eye drops for glaucoma, the nurse understands the desired drug effect causes pause. And hopefully that was painfully obvious, decreased interocular pressure. And I hope that is the end of this narration because, oh, there's still a case study. Okay, case study. This is the really long narration. I'm sorry. Okay, case study, 60-year-old man with a history of benign prostatic hypertrophy and hypertension is seen in the emergency department because he was trimming his shrubs and got something in his eye. He complains of a pain rating of 8. Which medication does the nurse anticipate administering via eye drop to help control the patient's pain? Pause. Think about that. And hopefully you look back because two of these end in cane. This is not lidocaine. We don't make lidocaine eye drops. This would be tetracaine. Again, it does. Prince, that's squeaking your toy. Um, tetracaine is um, anything that ends in cane is numbing. All right, after administering that, which adverse effects does the nurse anticipate as possibly developing in the patient? Select all that apply. Pause. Answer this to yourself. And if you said all five of these make sense, you are correct. All of these are potential side effects of tetracaine. Lacrimation is um, when you get watery eyes, when you tear up. All right, the ophthalmologist tells the patient she's going to place a dye onto the patient's eye um, to identify the location of the foreign objects. Which drug does the nurse anticipate the ophthalmologist will use? Uh oh, I didn't talk about this. I guess you better look these up. All right, so this one is the fluorescent, AK Fluor. Um, that actually um, is makes an object in your eye more visible. All right, a foreign particle is removed from the patient's eye. Tells the nurse he forgot to mention he takes eye drops for glaucoma. He can't remember the name of the drug, but knows the eye drop bottle has a purple lid. The nurse identifies that a purple lid most likely contains which type of anti-glaucoma drug. So this is kind of funny, but I because your patient often can't see very well when they're using eye drops, um, different colors of lids mean different things. 
So hopefully you all Googled what purple lid eye drops mean. And purple lids are, are cholinergics. There are alpha agonists, alpha gain. And I have, I should have, I pulled this up before the narration. Yep, here we go. So this is, um, here's a eye drop color chart. So this is interesting, but we do color code them. Um, I got this, if you just Google eye drop color chart, you'll see these. But yeah, we, um, we color code these. Um, on purpose and most pharmacology or most um, pharmacology, pharmaceutical companies um, follow these. So anyway, that is it on this narration and the next one will cover ears.